Greetings, friend. Normally, when you look to the right of this puzzle, you'll see in the blue box a statement that puzzle has one unique solution. It's not required for Sudoku puzzle to have one unique solution, but to do normal Sudoku handmade classics in the puzzle featured on channels like Cracking the Cryptic, you want a unique solution for a puzzle so that you can use all the available techniques and strategies. It's also a lot more satisfying. This puzzle does not have a unique solution the way you're looking at it right here. Now, if you clicked on a link for the puzzle uh, for this video, it's going to be slightly different. You're going to have a couple of fours put in that puzzle. That is the correct starting grid for the puzzle. Mark didn't figure this out until after he started solving this. It's amazing that the solve paths are pretty similar. And his point was he was trying to show that computer generated puzzles are not that much fun to solve. He also makes some contradictions throughout the video, and I'm going to show you that in my analysis. And early on in the original video, he says, we don't solve puzzles with alternative solutions. Yet this is a puzzle that has more than one solution. You will be shocked by the two other contradictions that Mark makes throughout this solve. So I'm going to show you how to solve this puzzle the way Mark did and where he got to the point where he realized there wasn't going to be one solution and how to solve the actual intended puzzle. I also got my pause the video and what if moments. Click below if you want to give this puzzle a go. And with that, it's solving time. So Mark Goodliff, he starts with looking down in block five and notice there's only one place to put a nine so he marks that there then he marks two fives here in block seven he's using Snyder notation so anytime in a three by three block you have two possibilities for a candidate you mark them and in case you solve one of these cells you can solve the other right away and mark is uh uses them quite a bit and it's helpful in figuring out where the restrictions and choke points are in puzzles like this Okay, he's able to then solve for a six in block nine because of the way these sixes interact with it. And he's going to do some more marking. Sixes in block six, some ones in block four. And then he notices he made these fives here, but then he saw there's a nine here and here. And so the fives and nines are restricted to the same two cells in block seven. So he's like, oh, this is a hidden pair. And this is very valuable because now, because the five and nine are limited to those two cells, they can't be anywhere else in block seven. If you want to learn more about hidden pairs and the other top strategies you'll find in Sudokus like this, click on the pin comment below, download my free solving guide. It's something I give out to help people solve hard Sudokus like this one. And while you're at it, check out my Maya Coffee page. I really appreciate your support to help me make better content for you. All right, after this, he looks at where the sevens can be down in block seven and marks that. And then he realizes that these sevens are a pointing pair, which means they're limited in row nine in block seven. So they can't be anywhere else along row nine because they have to be somewhere here in the block, which means now with these two sevens and this seven, the only place left for seven in block eight is right there. So he marks that seven. Then he does some more Snyder marks uh, with the ones in block nine. Then he realizes uh, and sees that with these two nines and this nine, he can solve for a nine up here in row one. And then also sees with this two and this two, you can solve for a two up there as well. Then he does some more Snyder marks up here, realizing that the one can't be there. It's limited to two spots in block three. He marks those. Then he marks some sevens in block six, some fives in block five and some sixes in block eight. Okay, after that, he is able to solve a three by looking in block four and seeing that where these two threes are, restricts the threes to one spot. This cell right here, which displaces that Snyder mark, is able to solve for a one. So far, uh, all the solving is pretty standard stuff and he's doing just fine. Okay, so after that three, he then marks ones in block one, ones in block seven, and then realizes there's some restrictions down here in block seven because of the five nine. One, you have these two threes here and this three. So there's only one place to put a three. And it displaces the Snyder one and the Snyder seven. So he's able to solve both of those. 
And then he's able to look up and see that you got the seven and one here and you got the seven and one here. So it restricts us to seven and one of these two spots. So he does mark the one right here and the seven right there and removes that mark. And realizes with these two sevens and this seven, he can solve for seven right here, displacing this Snyder seven and solving for seven right there. After doing that, he looks over and says, oh, the twos can be in these two spots here in block six, but then quickly realizes when looks over in block four that the twos are a pointing pair, the limit of the two spots, which means he's like, oh, well, I can't be a two anymore. And so he gets rid of the two, solves it for uh, that cell for a two right there, and then he's able to move on and with these twos, solve for a two here and solve for the one right there. All right, after solving this one, he finds 489 naked triple here to finish up block seven. Takes away that nine, it's already in row nine. And then he notices that you know, with this two, he can solve for a two down there in row nine. And with these twos and this two, he can solve for two in block two. And then he marks sixes in block two. And then he's able, to, because of this one, solve for the one up here in block three okay and he notices now it's like there's a lot of places for the digits four and eight and one of the issues with this puzzle and why it doesn't have a unique solution is because there are no given fours or eights in the starting grid if you look at it, there's no fours or eights and i understand that in order for a sudoku puzzle to have a unique solution you must have eight unique digits as part of the starting grid and so that's one of the problems here. But he does mark a bunch of fours and eights in the grid, which now restricts uh, three and five there in block three. And then he's able to solve for a nine because he notices, oh, I got two nines here. I got this nine. I can actually solve for a nine. So he still actually has a couple more cells he can solve. And then he looks at uh, the twos. And see there's a place for a two here row seven column one which allows him to displace the snyder two and solve for two right there in row four then he marks the sixes in block four and he marks another uh four eight pairs here in row six a lot of four eights and if you do the original the regular solve you'll notice these four eights line up and uh, they can be used for advanced strategies uh, Remote pair actually is very helpful. There's a couple of different ones you can use there. All right. He then looks in block six and sees that he has a three, five hidden pair because you got this three and a five right here. So the limit of this spot right there. And then he starts coloring all the four, eight cells. So he starts coloring all the ones and so the idea here is you go all right i don't know if it's a four or an eight but whatever this is this purple is the green is the opposite so if that's a four that's an eight then this would be a four again so all the purples will be the same digit and all the greens would be the same digit and that's what he's hoping to do remote pairs work the same way um, i have actually covered this in my coloring tutorial i'll put a link to it here and you can show how to use and solve the idea is when you have two different colors, like this green, a purple, and this green, looking at the same cell, then you can eliminate both of those because you know one of these has to be the four, one of these has to be the eight. You can eliminate both from any cell that sees both. This is what Mark's trying to do. And so he looks at this cell and says, oh yeah, I can eliminate a four and eight from right there. And he solves it, or he puts a three, five, six right there. He can't solve it yet. Then he realizes that you have a five, six naked pair here in column four. And then in block seven, you got these two candidates. They create a four, eight naked pair. And this leads up to our first pause the video moment. At this point, Mark finds and solves for a five. So pause the video and see if you can solve for a five in this puzzle while I give you a few seconds. Congratulations if you spot it. You really are good at displacing Snyder. For those of you who just want to enjoy the show, because of this 3-5 pair here, you can eliminate that 5 and solve for a 5 right here in block 5. All right, Mark does see that. And then he adds the 4-8 and colors it purple. And in block 4, 
he adds a 4 8. But he doesn't know what color this one's going to be. He hasn't figured that part out yet. And so then he sees, oh, yeah, I got this 5 right here. He removes the 5 from there and gets a little excited because he's just uncovered the next advanced strategy. It's an XY wing. So Mark finds this XY wing. You need three paired possibilities of the three candidates. In this case, it's a 3, 5, 6. You got a 3, 5, a 3, 6, and a 5, 6 right here. One cell sees the other two. And Mark explains it really well. If this is a 3, then that cell would be a 5. If this is a 6, that cell would be a 5. So any cell that sees both of these two cells, you can eliminate a 5. So you eliminate a 5 from right here. And also, maybe you saw it this way, where this is the pivot, and these are the two pinchers. It still works the same way. But it is an XY wing. You want to learn more about those, click on this tutorial. And while you're at it, subscribe to Smart Hobbies. You'll solve XY wings even better. Okay, so what he's able to do is then eliminate the 5 from there and solve that for 3, solve that for 5, solve this for 5, and solve this cell for 3. He gets a little excited, a little happy, but then he realizes there's really not much else solving you can do right here. You need another advanced strategy. He's getting to the limit of where uh, these 4 and 8s are coming into play. So he comes down here and says, oh, I got a purple 4 right here. I got green right here. So 4 and 8 can't be in this cell. This has to be a 3, 5. And then this brings up to the second contradiction he made. All right, the first one was he doesn't do puzzles with alternative solutions. The second one, he says, it's like, I don't want to bifurcate. I want to solve this logically because I'm trying to help uh, Elena, no, Evelina, the person who gave the puzzle and solve it logically. But he can't really get any further because of the grid that he set up here. So instead, he does some more coloring he goes, okay, these is, one of these is four ones and eight. I'm not sure which one's which. He realizes that there's only two possibilities for three here. And then he goes, what if this one is purple? What if this is a four, eight, and it's purple? The other, it can either be a three or it could be one of the four, eight candidates. He says that this is purple. If it's a four and eight, then this would be green. That would be purple. And this would be green. And since this is green and this is purple, that would eliminate a, uh, the four, eight from here. This would make this a six. And so a six couldn't be in this cell anymore. And because of this six, it couldn't be in this cell anymore. And so a six would have to be in this cell right here. He says this cell is the key for his bifurcation. But if he did have, if the four eights right there, the only other place to put a three is right here. So the six would have to go there and the three. And so he goes, that can't happen. This cell can't be the purple four eight. It has to be this cell right here because this is the only other possibility for that 4, 8. It can't be in these cells because they don't contain the digits 4 or 8. And then Mark kind of, you know, rants. He's like, this is why I don't like computer-generated puzzles. You get into these kind of quandaries, it's not any fun. But I'm going to bring you up to my what-if moment. What if Mark didn't bifurcate and instead actually had the right starting grid? What could you do about it? How could you finish solving this puzzle? I'm going to show you that right now. Okay, this is the puzzle with the two added digits. It's the one I put in the link below. And you see these two fours now makes this puzzle have a unique solution. And what was frustrating Mark in, in what he's used to, and I'll, I'll, I will agree with him, Sudoku Handmade Classics, coming from setters that we know and love, you know, they have a thought, a solve path to them, and they're just very enjoyable once you figure out that solve path and the idea that that setter is trying to convey. In a computer-generated puzzle, usually there's no continuity in the strategies, and it can be dull, boring, um, hard. And the, and the strategies are just there to be hard. This puzzle, I don't think, was a good example of showing why you shouldn't solve computer generated puzzles. If you have this correct digits in here, you still do all the solving he did, but instead of you can use coloring or remote pairs. I actually had a lot of fun working these remote pairs to eliminate the four and eight from there and eliminate the four and eight from there and create some more pairs and hidden pairs. So that first strategy actually blends in really well with the second strategy, which was that X, Y wing. Uh, you will find that as well and you can make those solve. So the strategy blends into the second one. And now the third one is the one I'm going to show you. This is what's going to crack the puzzle. So if that was a four, 
you know this could be an 8. And then you need to add in these 6 and 8s right here. Uh, you'd realize, you know, you wouldn't have a 4 right there. And then this cell would only be a 3 or an 8, and this cell would only be a 4 or a 6. You actually have everything you need to solve the rest of this puzzle. And it involves a strategy that uses a lot of by-value cells, BBCs. And it is an XY chain. Okay, I'll show you what XY chain is. And it'll probably help if I get rid of all these colors to do it. Okay, start right here in this cell. It can only be a 4 or a 6. So either this cell is a 4. If it's not a 4, it has to be a 6. Okay, if it's a 4, then any cell that sees it cannot be a 4, right? If it's not a 4, then this cell would be a 6. This would be a 5. This would be a 6. This would be an 8. This would be a 6. This is an 8. And this cell would be a 4. So either this cell is a 4. If it's not a 4, this cell is a 4. So any cell that sees both of these, you could eliminate a 4. So you can eliminate a 4 from right here. And this is lovely. It's a use of strong and weak links for you to make a deduction and realize you can eliminate a 4 from right here. You solve this 4 and 8. And the rest of the puzzle is just naked and hidden singles. If you want to learn more about XY chains, check out this tutorial. Now, let's get back to the main solve. So what Mark figured out is like, this can't be purple 4 or 8. It's got to be this cell. So he changed it to that cell, which would bump out the 6. And then he could solve this cell for a 6. After doing that, he's able to figure out the greens and the purples over here. Then he colors this 4 8 right there. Then he realizes, hey, I got 3 5 naked pair down here. And then he remembers, oh, yeah, I got that 5 right there. So this is a 3, and that's the 5. Then he uses this 5 to solve for a 9 there and a 5 there. After solving the 9 and 5, he's able to remove the 9 from there, color it green, and solve this cell for a 9. He's able to do some more solving here because of this 3. He can actually solve for the 6 up there, which allows him to solve for the 5 and solve for the 3 and realize that has to be a 4, 8. And he colors that green. After doing that green, does a couple more cells of green, the 4, 8 green here, 4, 8 green right there, which allows him to solve this cell for a 6. And you're like, well, how come, how do you know that that's not a 6? It's because this green 4, 8 and this purple 4, 8 both look here. So this cannot be a 4 and 8. That has to be a 6, which means this cell is the only place left for a 6 in block 1, and he has a 4, 8. So he gets those colors in. And then he looks over and goes, okay, I got this six here. I can solve for the six and put the last four eight in. All right. And so that's where Mark ended up. And he's like, there's got to be something wrong here. And he must have mistranscribed something. And sure enough, he forgot the two fours that go right there. And so he puts a note up in the video about it. But basically, once you know that any, you know, any of these purple cells is a four, all the purple cells have to be a four. So you can solve all those for four, which solves all the other cells for an eight. You want to see Mark solve a puzzle that really has one unique solution using coloring? Then check this video out. Please consider supporting me through my Buy Me a Coffee page. And thank you so much for watching.